All right, guys, there it is up there running right now. The camera don't do it much justice on speed, but that's pretty much a solid silver blur in my view. Hey, everybody, check this out. Everybody says, hey, man, you need to give me a output of that termite. All right, look, 19 mile an hour average, 18 mile per hour right now, 21 mile an hour gust, and that's recorded for quite a while. Uh, you can see that uh, wind meter up there about, I don't know, three feet away, four feet away from that wind turbine. So we're going to go. There's today's date, 428-19, 12:21 a.m. So um, lucky you, I'm up. I'm gonna go give you that turbine and we're just gonna walk it through, all right. All right, I'm gonna try to be quick so people don't bitch about me shaking the camera. It's my carpal tunnel or something else, I'll figure it out. All right, here we go. All right, you can hear it, I think. Oh, my yard tools. All right, there's a turbine. Right there. Hope you can hear me. There's a turbine right there, my little silver beast. All right, that's up there in Gray Matters, original spot. You can see her cooking pretty good, and the wind's coming from the west. So the, the uh, moving it up a little bit did help the little Billy Badass turbine. And uh, look at all my junk. Isn't that sweet? Hey, look, built another desk. All right, so it did help a little bit. Not a lot. So we're going to get out here, and we're going to get a reading. Ooh, mercy. Focus. All right, so right now the rectifier is at 132 degrees. I put one of these on here to test it to see what the thing will do. And there's the white wires. There's the red wires for the little center one in the middle. And there is the black wires coming from the one down the way. That is the chaos turbine. So you'll see what they are. The C for chaos, the B for Billy Badass, and the G, well, we didn't change it. It's just a gray matter space. And now we're gonna give you a little bit of the turbine's output. So I'm gonna let you watch for a second, and you'll get, hold on, I get it in the camera there. You can see all of them. We got to focus back a little bit there. And there's the turbines. So you're seeing right now, there's 400 watt peak right now. So 20, 21 mile an hour winds, gust, gust of 21. And it's pretty steady because we got an inversion going through. And this turbine here, down at the bottom's getting a little bit of prop wash from the little Billy turbine. This one's getting a little bit of prop wash from the five blader, and there's your five blader right there. Now, here's the news. The five blade is putting out more low wind wattage. When it was eight mile an hour, it actually peaked over the 13 volts the batteries are sitting at. So I'm, I'm kind of impressed with that. It does need a little balancing on the blades. Um, the break-in period though, it requires you to get a good 20 mile an hour hit for the break-in period for these things to liven up. But look at that. There is the turbine. And if you've got a little out of balance blades or something, what you want to do is loosen them all up, take a tape measure. I'll be going through that too, show you how to do it. Um, the blades are cast, inject molding, whatever. They're not 100% perfect, but they're within three grams. But three grams at about 900 RPMs, it can make them wobble a little. All right, now there's my setup. Over here is my diversion control system right here. I have two of these. I have one inside of this box up in here. And um, hooked up through using a solar controller. That is my surge. And then I have this one here that is my standard issue controller. This thing here activates SSRs, solid state relays. They in turn run these. And then up here, it's running my old WinMax 500 watt load. And then over here, it's running 150, 150, 150, 150. So uh, we're really pulling, I guess, about a thousand watt diversion load. And if it gets out of hand out there on the outside of the wall is another 700 watts that that controller will kick on. Pretty simple. So this one is set at, hold on here, at 14.50. That one outside or this one for the outside is set at 14.7. So what that does is that keeps my inverters, that keeps them from freaking out uh, when you get over 15.3 or four volts in, in the quick little hits. Now over here, you'll see that the battery, since we, we were welding today, so we were using the, the big 5,000 inverter for the running the little 90 amp MIG, so it's pulled down the batteries a lot. We started at 12.7 with these about two hours ago before the wind kicked up, so there's my battery bank. Um, 
the reason you won't win power. Okay, you want to justify it. Now, you'll see my setup. It's not complicated. Just imagine one turbine, two turbines, three turbines. Increase your diversion load each time. Make sure you keep your rectifiers cool or their efficiency goes to shit. So, this is my batteries. They're big. These are actually made by East Pin Manufacturing. They also label them as the DECA solar battery with big yellow labels. The reason you want a wind turbine is because of your batteries. All right, I got 3,200 watts of solar on top of this place. I got another uh, 1,800 on my house, and I got another 450 out basically in the yard. So the reason you want the wind turbine is because it helps maintain the batteries. By keeping the batteries high, even overnight, the wind will help. And it'll keep them warm overnight. It'll keep the bubbles moving in the acid in the solution. And if you don't do this, if you pull your batteries down to 10.5 overnight and, and the solar hits them back, what happens is over time, with nothing coming in at night or nothing continuously charging the batteries, basically, it's no hurt them to continuously charge them. With nothing doing that, you get sulfation on the batteries. That's when a, a cake of material mounts or gets onto the battery's uh, cell surface. And eventually it'll swell up to where the plates will touch, the battery will short, or the electron flow will just stop. And the solution to that is this stuff. Magnesium sulfate, which is Epsom salt. And if you can go look back at my other videos, maybe even up here in the corner, I'll pop that in there. So if you want to restore some old batteries to use, as you're learning this setup, say you want to want to do that, there you go. All right. Another thing is, is let me look up here. There's all kinds of controllers. I got just buttloads of these controllers up here. Um, you name it. Just a lot of them. And there's what that Olympic power controls. That's me. We build these. So one of the things, and, and, and look, big three-phase SSRs, solid-state relays. This is for people who have the big 48 volt turbines that I build and install. And what it does is I actually come out of this, feed the turbine wires through it, bounce right off of those same leads. Let me show you right quick. I got a lot of people that get interested in all this crap in there. All right, this is how the three phase diversion load system works. Um, you want to get resistors. Let me grab a couple of them. I'll just grab one up here. Oh. I'm not going to cut this video lazy tonight so say you got a resistors and you'll have two resistors one wire goes in this end another wire goes in the other one and a third wire actually comes up here where these two join so they're actually bridged apart so that your your uh, detector of right here this will you preset this for let's say if you're um, uh, 12 volt system you preset that for like 15 volts and this will be your braking system for your turbine. This is called a loaded braking system. So what it does is instead of shorting the wires together like that ass clown down there in the Midwest does, blows out your turbine, smokes them, what this does is actually takes in your turbine wires coming from turbine go here and then go right back out from this side. These three wires go from here through your resistor load. These two wires are low voltage, 5 to 15 volts, and they go through your little controller module. The little controller module will cause these to kick on, connect these wires, send it into this, even though the turbine is going down here and bouncing right back out to here and right back out. Hopefully I can explain that better. What happens is when it makes contact, SSR, solid state relay, and sends the power to these points, it basically doesn't do a short out as if it's crossing three wires together. It actually just feeds it into a load. So uh, the turbine can do that, and you can also apply a rectifier on this side. So if I wanted to really, if I have a really out of control turbine, say I've got a 48 volt and I live in the Colorado mountains, and I really want to do it, well, I take this, and I put this, and we've installed six of these out of side of Rifle, Colorado, so believe me, it works very well. So the same process, turbine comes in, goes right back out all three times, and then over here, you're basically not breaking the circuit, you're adding load to the circuit. So when this thing says, oops, 15 volts, kicks it on, feeds it into the rectifier, one, two, three, turns it into DC voltage, goes through your resistors, and dead kills into your resistors. So you'd put the resistors like this, one, two, three, four, five, whatever you want load. You can actually use 
and I'm probably making this video just too fucking long, but bitch about my hands, bitch about me not giving you a free candy bar, bitch about me not giving you a free education, fuck it, it might be long. So you can actually use these little resistors. This is a 100 watt ceramic, and you can actually put like four of these on this. And what it does is it goes into these when the turbine gets out of control, therefore putting the load against the turbine. And when you have the other rectifier down at the battery bank, down here, it doesn't affect it because that rectifier can only recognize voltage in one direction. You got it? Hope so. All right, we're going to be building some of these and I'm going to be showing these and I'm sure this ass wipe in Missouri is going to steal my design that I've been doing for years. Um, and the guy I work with, Mason. Um, but you know what? <laughs> At some point he's going to steal it anyhow. So there's your setup. There's your turbine. Sounds like I, the wind's actually sounding like it's died down a lot. So it's probably a lot less right now. We expected this little inversion to kick through. And like I told you when I installed the turbine, that's what I was going to do. But pretty comparable for around 15 to 20 mile an hour right now for your output. Now, let me explain something else. Long video. Once again, go watch cartoons if you get pissy. All right. Here's the story. Over here, get this wiped off of here. What else is a flannel shirt good for? All right, over here, here's your turbine. Turbines are rated in such a way. Now, if you go to a website that comes out of a hillbilly bill, they're going to lie to you. This is zero wind all the way up to about six miles per hour for a, qual uh, for a truthfully rated turbine. At this point, at this point, you're breaking voltage at about seven on these turbines. Now, if you buy someone else's, you might not do it till you get 30. But your wind speed increases will create a massive change. So at say seven miles per hour, you're at two watts because it just broke voltage, man. That's all it did. But at eight miles an hour, and I'm doing this left-handed, you're now at 10 watts. You see the difference? All right, so I better change the right hand. I'm gonna really piss off the, the bugger heads. All right, so now you're at 10 watts. All right, and then over here, now at 10 miles per hour. Well, hell, now I'm at 20 watts. Huh, all right, at 15 miles per hour. Now I'm at 120 watts. Now, it doesn't make a lot of sense just for that short little bit, but it's all about the RPMs all about it you have to get to a level of rpms where you're producing successful amperage these just barely get above battery because you remember they're pushing against the load of the battery unload the battery hell that might, thing might show 7500 watts but not against the battery there's your battery once you get above battery and then now you're going to exceed battery and you're going to get to 20 and then up here you're looking at in my case like you're seeing up here 350 watts just at five more mile per hour so the point is, is that unless you have winds in the 12 to 30 mile per hour abilities, and say you have an average nighttime wind of 15 with a low of 11 and a high of 18 at night, then a turbine is exactly what you fucking want. It's what you want and it's a wise move. If you have bad weather or your clouds are covering your solar panels at night and during that bad weather, you're going to recover that extra loss because you're going to be getting 20 plus. The turbine is what you want. If you don't want your battery plates to sulfate and you want to somehow keep the ability to prevent that and cost yourself another three grand like me in my battery, so I think 3,700 actually, then you want that. If you've got old batteries and you want to restore them and you got wind and you put in the magnesium sulfate, Oop, hold on here, MS2. If you want to do that, then a wind turbine in a windy area with an old battery and a little magnesium, Epsom salt, boom, almost like a brand new battery. So they have their abilities. Be aware, you know, the kids' bikes being built. Um, be aware of that. And I know that's a real clusterfuck. But 
we're going to be doing more videos and I'm going to explain how that three phase comes in and bounces like you seen there in the beginning and back out it goes to the other rectifier over here and then over here with the two controller control wires goes to the resistor circuits over here okay we're going to show you that I'm going to share it we'll also share more that I've been using the secrets for 12 years y'all stick around all right man there you go running lights because I'm making power Y'all be good. Oh, yeah, and by the way, don't make fun of my fucking scribbles. Thanks. Lucky I told you all this shit.